Hey there, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist, and today we're gonna to be talking about what is the ideal client onboarding workflow and process that you can configure in HubSpot, right? We don't often think about client onboarding as connected to marketing or growth, but the reality is, is if your client onboarding process is streamlined and frictionless and you communicate well and it's smooth, that does a lot to set the relationship on the right track, which could have a significant impact on retention and growth and evangelism. So the way you onboard your clients is just another example of how you can embed growth systems into all aspects, teams, and departments of your organization. So I'm gonna show you a simple way on how to optimize your client onboarding process in HubSpot. Okay, so right now you're seeing a company index page. So no matter what, whatever your business is, your CRM, you should be able to go into it and quickly see a list of all of your active clients or customers and relevant information about them. This is a demo portal that happens to be modeled after the HR and payroll industry. So you're gonna see some properties that may not relate to your business at all. But in this case, the client name, the owner, the status, what state they're in, their IDs, uh, when they started, what pay frequencies they're, they're, they have, what services they're using. This is all really relevant information. So I can't decide that for you, certainly not in this video, but you should start there. And then the question becomes is, how do we get clients created there? How do clients automatically enter this filter? And the answer actually begins with the sales process, right? Who is responsible for closing new clients? Well, it's the sales team. And so where does that live? That lives in your deal pipeline, right? So here, once again, is an example of a deal pipeline in HubSpot. Now, we have a separate video that touches on how to optimize your deal pipeline and what a true instrument for growth, a well-configured deal pipeline is and should be for your organization. But that's a video for another day. Today, we're just gonna focus on what happens when you move a deal to a closed one stage. In this particular example, there is a signed paperwork stage. So that's when the sales rep has essentially gained a formal commitment. So when a sales rep is, is gaining a commitment, they're gonna move the deal to the signed paperwork stage. And the deal is gonna stay there until they're onboarded. In this particular instance, it's assuming that there's a two to four week onboarding process where it's like an implementation or a conversion. So the client actually isn't considered an active client until that onboarding process, that implementation process has completed. So a sales rep is gonna move a deal into signed paperwork. And the first thing that you need to think about is what are all the pieces of data that the implementation team needs to do their job? And you make that required in order to move a deal in that stage, number one. Number two, that's gonna to go to an implementation pipeline. And then it's gonna be assigned to an implementation manager or automatically to an implementation rep. There's a lot of options for how you choose to assign that. But then that information is going to come through so that the person who's now responsible for working the implementation can track it and all of the information re related to that specific implementation project. So this person is moving it, they can see how this progresses, they're actively working with this client to make sure that they're gathering all the information they need, training the client and all of that. Okay, but eventually these implementations will move to turned active. And when that's turned active, just like how you require your sales rep to, to capture properties to go to the implementation team, you need the implementation team to be required to capture data in order for that client to now be considered an active client, right? So whether it's client ID, uh, company ID, right? These are things that once again, I'm just putting in placeholder values here. These are things that only really relate to the payroll and HR industry, these particular properties, but every business has data points that matter when you're onboarding a client. Well, so what do you need to think about? One, what data dictates how we serve and support them, right? Like, are there different segments of size, uh, product usage, industry, geography that dictate who is going to be their main point of contact? So you need to have all of that in place. 
two, how do you want to engage them and market to them over time, right? So it's really important to understand what products or services of yours they're using, because not only do you want to send them information about that, but you may also over time eventually want to send them upsell emails. So make sure you have all of that data captured. Sales hands off to implementation, implementation hands off to customer service, even if you have one or two people doing the job of those three teams, you wanna have those formal handoffs and you wall it off and you build some requirements, some, some CRM integrity in order for the right data to be captured in order for it to move on to the next stage. So now you're essentially laying the groundwork to have clean, accurate company records. And that's gonna be imperative for the long term. You wanna think about what you can do from a um, automation perspective. So now that we know we've built in the right uh, systems for um, onboarding clients through data collection and organization, we wanna communicate with them. So you should have at least one workflow that triggers from when a client has been moved to turned active. You may also want one when they give the verbal commitment before they've been onboarded, but you absolutely want one once the onboarding or implementation process is complete. Here I have a workflow that triggers when the ticket status in the implementation pipeline has been moved to turned active. You can play around with delays here if you want. Oh, I know a lot of companies that prefer to delay for an hour or so. I don't know, maybe it doesn't seem like too fast or too automated, or maybe just to allow for reps to continue to update records. But then you wanna make sure that, hey, this is a client now, so if they weren't a marketing contact before, they are now set as a marketing contact so they can get our newsletters and our other information. We've set their, their life cycle stage to client, and then we can enroll them in a little drip campaign where you send them a couple of emails. Now, I can't script these emails for you because this is a demo portal and I don't know your business, but let me tell you what most smart companies normally do. One, they just say welcome and thank you, like express gratitude and excitement that this company has chosen your business, has placed their trust and confidence with you, and excitement about the ways that we can help them. Other things that they may do are introduce uh, members of their team, all of the resources they have, how they can seek support, and anything else that's relevant to their business. This is you rolling out the red carpet and making the client feel welcomed and special and supported, right? All of that can be done in a simple workflow. Next, ask clients what they think. Not right away, but we can gain so much from learning about a client experience that can help us solve problems, prevent small problems from turning into big problems, and really afford us a whole bunch of other benefits. So if we have the right data collection, which leads to a simple welcome workflow, then maybe 90 days in, 120 days in, whatever is right for you, send them some type of feedback survey. In this case, we do an NPS, which measures customer loyalty. That's going to be the best survey in most instances, but not always. But send them an email. Let's say three months in. It says, how are we doing? Not only are you gathering that data and you can use that from a high level to measure performance, uh, but you can also follow up on it immediately, right? In this particular instance, we have workflows that trigger based on the response. So if they give a negative response, alert the customer service rep right away, create a support ticket and say, hey, we're gonna be on this. We're gonna try and nip this problem in the bud. And if they're like overwhelmingly positive, 10 out of 10, oh my God, we love you. Well then put them on your promoters list or your evangelist list. That's somebody you can tell about your, your referral program or you can approach them for an upsell or at the very least let the customer service rep or, and or the sales rep know that, hey, this client's really happy. Maybe you can approach them, ask for a review, a testimonial, a referral, schedule a follow-up meeting, see if there's other products and services they wanna buy. So now what we've done is we've taken this process of client or customer onboarding, something that we think about as like operations and customer service, and we've optimized it for growth by doing a couple of very simple things. One, having more stringent requirements on how data is captured and organized. Two, automating some welcome emails when they've become active, and three, asking for their feedback and actually doing something about it. Now, every business is different and the client onboarding process could be more or less complex, but adopting and applying some of these principles will undoubtedly improve your client onboarding process and help you grow scalably, organically, and sustainably. So I hope you found this valuable. Uh, we absolutely love making these videos. We do at least once a week. First of all, if you liked it, please 
like this video and hit subscribe. That helps us reach more people who really need this content to help them. If you have any questions or you would like to suggest a topic for a future video, there is a link in the description that will take you to a form and you can submit your idea. Otherwise, thanks so much for hanging around. I hope you really enjoy this and all of our other videos and we'll see you soon.